Hello, hello again, everybody. Zagatech is here with my WWE World Review for tonight, Monday, July 21st, 2014, from Miami, Florida. Of course, the aftermath of Battleground and the World of the Summer Slam begins with Plan C being initiated. Plan A is not working, Plan B is not working for Triple H, and like I said, Plan C is revealed as the Summer Slam main event is announced. Plus, we had two great matches tonight, and as you see also by my subtitle, Raven West of the Wife of the Authority. Now, if you haven't noticed my channel, I did not make a Battleground review last night. I did see the pay-per-view, but I was at a gig last night, so I didn't make it home till like, and I, I missed like the first hour. I did watch the first hour on my tablet at my gig. There was Wi-Fi there, so I got to at least watch the watch the. Pay per view a little bit, then watch the rest when I get home. So, since I didn't make a proper review for Battleground, not only will I be telling my the result telling the results of Raw and my thoughts on it, I'll also give you in the middle of these results, thoughts on Raw, give you my thoughts on the results of Battleground. Since I didn't make a review last night properly. So let's kick it off with Trip Wage coming out way to say that later on tonight, he'll make his decision about who will be the man to take on. John Cena, who retained his championship in the Fatal 4-Way match at Battleground, the main event of Battleground. Now, like I said, I made it home for the main event. And for Fatal 4-Way, it wasn't that bad. Roman Reigns was the MVP of the match in my mind. He will be a world champion one day. He's probably the only guy people care for now. Since d is gone with an injury, maybe gone for a long time, Punk's retired, and now his contract's officially up. And I hear the chance again tonight. Give it up. He ain't coming back so soon. He looked so clean cut at the uh, Alternative Press Awards, by the way. For the photos I've seen on Facebook and Twitter. Um, Reigns looked dominant. He looked really good in the matchup. And I think the setup for his Orton match, I, like people have been saying, that I wanted to see Reigns against Trip Wade at SummerSlam. But since Trip Wade didn't want to overshadow Plan C, Reigns may take on Orton now. And the seeds were planted by Orton attacking Wayne. Wayne's had many opportunities to win the match. At the end of the match, he got attacked by Randy Orton with an RKO, leading to Orton getting FU'd on top of Kane by Cena. In the seeds for the possible Orton and Wayne's match grew brighter, grew bigger. As during his opening segment, Trip Rich was talking about, like I said, making a decision later on tonight about who was going to face Cena at SummerSlam. Orton came out pleading his case. And Kane came out. Of course, Owen and Kane have had their issues for the last couple weeks. They did had they were on the same side in the beginning of the match last night. They did they were on the same side trying to bring the title back to the authority. But in the end, both guys realized the match was every man for himself. So the relationship broke down. And we all know what happened. So these guys are trying to get the differences aside as Woman Reigns came out during a segment. And like I said, I liked uh Reigns' promo. I think Wayne's going to some decent promos tonight. But saying that no one wants to see Owen against Cena. Or anybody against Cena, but Wayne's and Cena. And then he's saying, believe in Roman Wayne's. Bang! Big Superman punch the game. Leading to a pump to match up. Handicap match. It was a night of handicap matches. Two back to back handicap matches. Made by both members of the authority, Triple H and Stephanie. So, like I said, this is a bump to match. Triple H made a match, handicap match, Kane and Orton against Roman Reigns against Kane and Orton. Now, Kane and Orton, was, like last night, they did more on the same side. They were like double teaming and really isolating Reigns as the numbers game got to Reigns big time. But of course, Reigns, who looked good in that Fatal 4 way, looked good again tonight, dealing with all of his big moves. The big kick, and then eventually did try to nail the two big moves. And it's a good reaction for the fans. Like I said, Reigns is getting over with the fans big time. I've been seeing the seeds for the Reigns push for a while. Since the virus series of last year, and of course, the Royal Rumble. So I think Reigns' time will come. Especially how he looked in that fatal four-way last night. Now, as Reigns was looking dominant, and uh, really uh, beating up on Kane, and despite Odin... Kane's united front, Owen did not really forgive Kane for not helping him out at the pay-per-view. So Owen refused to tag, walked out on Kane, 
leaving Kane to the Big Bang Hound of Justice. That was Woman Reign for another Superman punch, and of course the spear. And a one, two, three victory for Woman Reigns. Like I said, the scenes are planning grow, growing bigger for the possible Orton and Reigns match, as we would see also by our last segment. So uh, there you go. Now, like I said, Reigns is getting over. Like I said, he's only because since a lot of good guys and people cheer for now are gone, I think Reigns is the next guy. I've seen it. I've been seeing it for a while now. They're really getting him the big push. And Orton Reigns doesn't sound as bad as it look, bad as it sounds. We'll see how it goes. Now, like I said, we have two handicap matches in a row, made by both sides of the authority against both their common enemies. Of course, Trip Reigns had his problems with Reigns the last couple weeks. Still, had no issues with the Bella Twins, specifically Nikki Bella after Brie Bella quit WWE storyline wise at Payback. We've seen Brie Bella backstage at Money in the Bank being thrown out. This whole situation with the Bell Trends has gotten out of control of Nikki Bell being put in a handicap match week after week. Once again, after the 2-on-1 handicap match, we had a stupid 4-on-1 handicap match involving Nikki against Eva Marie doing what she does best, wanting the coattails of other success. The Kim Kardashian of WWE is like all her. Teamed up with Alicia Fox, Eva Marie, Moza Mendez. Now, the match was forgettable. I knew it was me stupid, but when overshadowed the match, was this whole Bella situation getting out of control as Brie Bella was in the crowd tonight. She bought a ticket as a fan. But of course, Stephanie continuing having her issues. Was telling Brie to leave. I said, okay, you have a ticket, but sit down. And I heard her say, you quite, you're quite the bitch. And you heard her. I, I was like, ooh. And I love the face of the fan next to her. Like, oh, <laughs> that's going to be a meme anyway. And then Brie Bella told Stephanie, you bitch. And then Stephanie did what Bree did at Payback. Slapped the chains out of Bree's mouth and then tossed out by security. And unfortunately, that situation would cause Stephanie and would bite Stephanie in the ass later on in the evening. Later on, as Stephanie came out to introduce Flo Rida's performance, now, I have nothing against performances at WWE. They've had performances for years. Motley Crue was on Wall a couple of years ago. But Flo Rida doesn't fit. He's, I know he's performed at WrestleMania and other pay-per-views, but he just doesn't fit with his audience. You know, I, I saw people bouncing, but notice the camera angles. Notice how they went to find, like, five people bouncing. The floor of the crowd was mostly dead for most of the night. Besides, a few moments, the crowd really popped. And they popped especially after the floor had a performance. Stephanie was still out there at the sheet to do floor at her. And again, a bunch of cops came out saying that this whole Bella thing's gone out of control and came to a head tonight as Stephanie was arrested tonight, storyline-wise. For assault, what well, not assault, but battery, and resist to arrest because she was resisting to arrest, and the crowd popped big time when Stephanie was put behind those handcuffs. Well, her dad's been handcuffed on live TV, so should she. So should she. Then Trip Wade decided to stick around and make his announcement and get to the police station with his wife. See what happens there. With that situation, with this whole Stephanie. I bet you 10 bucks that Stephanie's going to be like, Okay, Brie, I'll rehire you if you, drop, if you drop these charts. That's why I think this whole storyline is going to come up to. This whole situation with the Bella Twins, you know, the whole Brie thing and the whole Nikki thing, it's going to come to a head. And it's come to a head with Stephanie getting arrested tonight after slapping Brie tonight. I think it's going to come down that Brie gets rehired if she drops the charges against Stephanie for the battery. That's what I think it's going to come to. That's what happens with fired storylines. When there's a lawsuit involved... Then they get rehired. Ain't that right, Big Show? We saw that last year. The whole Big Show firing situation. When he filed a lawsuit, then they're like, okay, Big Show, drop your charges. So it takes something legal to get someone rehired in the company. Or in Emma's case, she has to steal something from Walmart, then get rehired. <laughs> I'll get to her. She was on water tonight. I'm surprised that she's on water tonight. Anyway, on to our next matchup. After that stupidness, we have more stupidness. Is we had Bo Dallas taking on. I'll be nice tonight. Wet button. I'm like trying not to raise my wet button. LeBron James, aka Damien Senna. Damien Senna dressed up like LeBron James once before in Cleveland. That was when LeBron James was still a part of the Miami Heat after the Heat lost to Spurs in the NBA Finals. Now, as we all know now, 
for those who do follow basketball, LeBron made the decision to go back to Cleveland. So now that they're in Miami, they had LeBron James slash Damian Tedder come out. And it's kind of ironic. For two reasons. One, because obviously everybody in Miami hates Mr. LeBron James for walking out. It's a better way to have someone dressed up like him. And he was taking on a guy named Bo Dallas. Get it? Dallas Mavericks. Wasn't the Dallas Mavericks in the finals against the Heat back in 2011? When the Mavericks won the NBA champion. That's what I think. Now, that was what made the uh, incident more I wanted that Dallas would take on a guy dressed up like LeBron James. And once again, like if you're a week, Santa got buried. I did like the you know references to the. Uh, I, I've been saying this for weeks. The Damien Santa has been taking in like a pro, but getting these characters. And getting heat for these weird outfits. But I liked it when he was getting real heat as himself. As the intellectual savior. And I hope that. if I said a few weeks ago that I want Santa now to fucking. Take it out. And stick it out. And then drop a pipe bomb on him. But I think he should do what LeBron did to Miami. Leave the WWE. If it, it keeps going. He lost to Bo Dallas. It's Bo Dallas is 20 and old. 20 and Bo. Are you serious? Damien sent us above. But he's more talented than Bo. I have nothing against Bo Dallas. You know, he's okay and his kept is getting over him. But you have to have a guy that... Like, the only way to get Bo Dallas cheered is to have a guy that doesn't like LeBron James. That's the only way In Miami. That's the, only, that's the only reason why people would cheer for Bo Dallas. That's like putting... That's like the only reason why people would actually cheer Jack Swagger is if you put him against Rusev. Same thing with the Bo Dallas thing. You'll cheer him. If you have someone dressed up like LeBron James in Miami against Bo Dallas, they will cheer. <laughs> Feel the dreams reference. Anyway, <laughs> as the continuing bearing of Sandow continues, on with our next scenario. Like I said, like seeing Sandow losing out against losing out like Bo Dallas is stupid. Well, at least Bo Dallas's brother is doing okay despite losing against Chris Jericho last night at Battleground. Now I've been a, I've been like saying it for weeks about Bray Wyatt and Jericho being an epic feud. Now. Bray Wyatt need a big win. In my mind, Bray Wyatt need to win at Battleground. He need a big win and get a bounce back after losing to Cena in the in the matches. Well, exclude that stupid ending at Extreme Rules. Bray Wyatt won, but not clean. So it was an okay match against Jericho at Battleground. With Jericho winning after a cold breaker. Now, I was disappointed, but in the back of my mind, I was like, Bray Wyatt's gonna... Like, in my mind, Bray Wyatt deserves a bigger win at SummerSlam. Which could happen. Especially after what happened tonight, after Bray Wyatt attacked Jericho just moments before he was supposed to be the scheduled guest on the highlight wheel. So he came out attacking Jericho on the app. And then of course the highlight wheel happened with just him as him. I didn't like I didn't like this promo again by Bray Wyatt saying the battles. I don't care about battles. I care about winning the war. Now, take this in consideration. Take this. Soak it in. A couple days ago, or this week. It's the one year anniversary when Bray Wyatt made his wall debut last year at the Wyatt Man. Look back at that one year. Yes, Bray Wyatt's become a ign a, uh, ign enigma in WWE, but he became more bigger. Losing the Cena in the feud, being on the losing end of the feud. You know, he's 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 a great promo guy. He's a decent athlete. He's gotten better. And of course, the Wyatt family as a whole ain't doing well. Hello. Wyatt's losing again to the Usos. And once again, a great matchup nonetheless. Two out of three falls last night. But I think Usos should be losing the title. I like Usos, but I think Wyatt should have won. But still. Uh, but Bray Wyatt needs a big win. And last year, he did his first pay-per-view match was at SummerSlam. And despite the ending, he beat Kane in a, in a photo match. That was stupid, though. So I think he is on the feed at SummerSlam. So it would be a great way to win at SummerSlam. In the B Jericho, a big win at a big event. That's why I was like, that kind of softened the wound of seeing Bray Wyatt lose against. I love Jericho, but Jericho wants to get people over. You ain't gonna do that if you let yourself beat Bray Wyatt. But like I said, the only positive is that even that Bray Wyatt shouldn't beat Jericho at a mid card event like a battleground. He should beat Jericho, a big storm on the biggest stage at the biggest event in the summer, at SummerSlam. So I think Bray Wyatt Jericho at SummerSlam, we match is going to happen, and Bray Wyatt will win. Speaking of matches that I hope will be at SummerSlam, 
On with our next matchup that stemmed from the Battleground Battle Royal last night. For the vacated in a Carnell Championship. Take on Battle Royal, and I predicted the ending. I was wrong on who was going to be eliminated, though. I saw Miz get tossed over the middle rope and the bottom rope so many times as Battle Royal. So I was like, okay, they're going to get down to the final two. And I thought Sheamus was going to be the one that would get eliminated by Miz because Miz and Sheamus had a little feud going on. So I thought Sheamus was going to thought he win after he eliminated Ziggler, who was the final guy as well. And then he would get eliminated by Miz coming up from behind. Well, I predicted that ending right. I was just wrong on who he was going to lastly eliminate. Dolph Ziggler. Now, Dolph Ziggler's guy needed a big push big time. And to see him get teased to win the IC Championship, they have Miz come up from behind and eliminate him. was like fucking stupid. But tonight, Dolph got a little slice of revenge tonight as he would have got Miz in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Now, if they wrestle, this could lead to a match at SummerSlam. And if they wrestle like this at SummerSlam, this could steal the show. Dolph Ziggler, it's called the show off for a reason. And this match was really good. Really good matchup. And like I said, Dolph got, got a little bit of vengeance after losing to Miz last night, after Miz pulled a shallow victory. Because like I said, I knew Miz was going to come from behind, play possum, and then come out and eliminate the last guy. But like I said, I thought the last guy would be Sheamus, not Ziggy. Great man. I'll give Miz credit all he, like You hate on Miz all you want. All you want. Miz looked as good as this match as Ziggler did. Really great action. Back and forth action. Near fall to near fall. Miz was trying his best to do all of his big finishes, including, of course, numerous attempts at the figure four leg lock. And had it on a big, long time. So to have knees, like Ziggler's knee going out. And Ziggler did all the big moves. He did the famous sir, the zigzag, and Miz trying to close the it finale. It's a fun matchup. Great matchup between these two guys. And I think Dolph carried the match. But Zig, like I said, Miz looked good as well. I'm, I give Miz credit for the two great athletes. And of course, like I said, when Dolph did nail the zigzag, that was the 1 2 3 victory for Dolph Ziggler. Getting an untitled victory over Miz and avenging getting screwed at the pay per view last night. So I was glad, like I said, that Mr. Ziggler got revenge. And I hope this leads to a big feud and a match at SummerSlam. I heard Ziggler was opposed to win the championship at SummerSlam. I mean, at the Battle Royal last night. But they wanted to give it to Miz. Because he's going to have a movie coming out called The Marine. That'll be in theaters. And then it'll land in your $5 bin at Walmart. Next to the chaperone. And next to Marines 2 and 3. <laughs> so, makes sense. Because it's Hollywood. Miz is this big media mogul now. So it makes sense that Miz go to be the IC champion as, into SummerSlam. That makes sense. But Ziggler needs a big push. And if I was on Ziggler's side, I'm so happy that Ziggler won. And he's on the Fandango feud with the whole lady situation. So, uh, there you go. Now, uh, on to our next matchup. Speaking of what happened at Battleground, we saw the mutual respect kind of continue with Paige and AJ. This whole thing about when AJ beat Paige a few weeks ago at the wall after Money in the Bank when she returned and beat Paige, they had mutual respect. They were like being besties. Or as Paige called themselves in their relationship, frenemies, last week on Wall. In the match at the Battleground pay per view, I did see a little bit of that at my gig before getting home on my tablet. Thank you, Wi Fi again. Thank you, Christian Mavis. Um, because uh, they had Wi Fi, so I got to watch at least a little bit of pay per view before I went home after the gig, after the DJ gig. But Paige got the loss against a a AJ, but he teamed up again tonight against Natalia and Emma. Like I said, I was probably seeing Emma back. After the whole situation with her lately, of course, with her getting arrested over stealing something at Walmart that was worth 20 bucks, then getting fired, then getting rehired. Wow, that was quick, but <laughs> typical little tag team matchup with AJ getting in there with Natalia. And I like the finish with Natalia trying to go for the sharpshooter, but AJ came in with her big flying wizard move. And of course, her submission, the Black Widow, in the tap out victory for AJ and Paige. Now, I think we all knew. That someone was gonna turn on the other in some way. And that peep that person that would turn was Paige. It looked like Paige's was back of Age was gonna continue till she raised her hand in victory following the tag team affair. But then bang from behind, Paige nailed her with a clothesline and beat the crap out of AJ all over the arena, saying, This is my house. And if you don't like it, get the fuck out. Delirious reference. If you haven't seen that, Eddie Murphy, Delirious, the dad being drunk. 
sketch, the the root the routine, great comedy special, one of the best stand-up specials. Make a lot of pop culture references tonight. The delirious, to feel the dreams. Hey, I'm like I'm like the commentary on WWE. Made out, I'm making out of date references. Anyway. <laughs> there you go, Michael Cole. Anyway. Uh like Paige wasn't getting over as a baby face. When AJ returned and the uh, war after money in the bank to eventually beat Paige for the championship, the crowd went nuts when AJ came out. Hey, cue the CM Punk chance. He ain't coming back. Give it up. He's gone now. Anyway, officially, um, so it made sense for Paige to turn heel because she wasn't getting over as a baby face as intended. You know, I like Paige. She's a good athlete, but she wasn't getting over. So now I think she's getting over as a heel. And now the real Paige AJ feud will begin. I smell another we meant at SummerSlam. No wonder why people don't want to buy the network. It's the same damn pay per view every month. For 10 bucks a month. You know? But we'll see how Paige does as a heel. I would love to see Paige as a good heel. And I'll see how AJ does as the babyface again. I think it's AJ's first time as a babyface since she was the GM of War back in 2012. Before driving her own little pipe bomb. Now, on to our next match. I need to get some quickly. Hold on, one second. Ah, I haven't worn this in a while. <laughs> Where is it on of Zach Water? Not only being on wall, this probably one of my, probably my favorite walls. It was a good one tonight. Two great matches. Plus, who would thought you'd see a wall with not only the Dolph Ziggler win tonight, but Zack Ryder finally won a match. Yay! He beat Fondango with a little help from Layla and Summer Rae. Now, we saw last night Summer Rae and Layla teamed up with Anna Rose to attack Fondango. I never thought we'd see a pre show of two matches. We had Naomi and Cameron. That would be stupid. Naomi won. Cameron won. What? And then we had Fondango against Adam Rose with Adam Rose lose, winning after Layla and Summer Rae distracted Fondango. I'm glad Ziggler's out of it. I think they're like hanging out. Like Summer Rae and Layla are like Cena haters. They don't care if it's against Cena, they cheer on whoever takes on Cena. Because they want Cena to get his ass beat. They're like Cena haters. They'll sign up anybody who wants to beat up on Fondango because they want to see Fondango lose. Like on a scene of haters. Speaking of that, I forgot to mention Triple H's great promo at the beginning of Water Night. This thing the internet haters who hated the pay per view. I love this promo. I love how the way Triple H feeds off the internet wrestling community. I love how he does that every week. Especially tonight in his opening promo. I forgot to mention that. Anyway, Zack Ryder wins. It was awesome to see him win. No match on Wall, let alone appear on Wall. Like he's been on Wall as a jobber, but it's nice to see him win over another jobber, Fondango. So, Salvation over. It's one of where it is for all time's sake since Zack Ryder won a match on Raw. Yay! Woo woo woo, you know it. <laughs> it's not gonna lay down at me, but hey, let's see Zack Ryder win on Raw. Two guys who deserve. And, and, not, and no better guys deserve to win on Raw tonight than Ziggler and then Zack Ryder, who feared against each other. So there you go. Now let's run next scenario a tag team affair with Goldberg, I mean, Ryback. back. To even cut his axle, finally in a match, not against Dull Dust and Gold Dust, who had a funny promo again tonight. They've been doing these vignettes for weeks with these funny Stall Dust and Gold Dust weapon, these promos. They're like animals being relegated to promos. Anyway, at least they're not showing anything like animals has been doing. Shilling Tristan Lemonade, and last week, Shilling Sonic. Now, our next match, like I said, White Baxel teaming up against Biggie and Kofi Kingston. Now, these guys need. A big heel turn. It was a, the characters have gone stale. Especially with the end of the matchup. Despite Kofi's best moves. And I like his, once again, his great elimination avoiding skills in the Battle Royale. Jumping on top of Big E last night. In the Battle Royale for the IC Championship. With, of course, despite Kofi's big moves, he got rolled up in a 1-2-3 victory for Y. Baxel. And the nearly SOS. So then, as Kofi and Big E was salt, was... Sulking after their loss, here comes Xavier Woods. Coming out to say that you guys know now that to get what you want, you can't just go around being a good guy. Because a good, because like Green Day always said, 
Nice guys finish last. And now, you gotta take things. You don't wait for things to happen. You gotta take it. I've been reading rumors for months about another nation of domination, another nation of domination starting with Biggie and Kofi and Xavier Woods. It could come to fruition with the start of this with Xavier Woods coming out. I mean, I'd be interested to see a new nation of domination. But in this day and age, when we're all politically correct, it'd be interesting to see how this works out. You know, speaking of things that prove that we're all politically correct these days, we had Rusev come out to take on the Great Khali. Now, last night we saw Lana make some statements that many people claimed was about the Ukraine plane bombing, which I do not want to do because I'm not political. She's like, you blame Russia for current events? Well, she's talking about the current events and the storyline between Rusev and Jack Swagger. And Rusev won, by the way. Should have saw that coming, like he did against Kali. Despite Kali being tall, oh, I'll give Rusev credit for trying to wrestle Kali. Took him down with some big drop kicks before setting up the accolade. He needs a better finish. Anyway, Rusev won again. Let's move on to our main event. A guy who I think needs a big push again. Cesaro. It's just me who's being buried lately. First, he lost to Kofi two weeks in a row. He lost to Biggie last week. He got eliminated out of the Battle Royal by, of all people, Heath Slater. Really? Really? Heath Slater eliminates Cesaro? Anyway, Cesaro needs a big push again. Any, any fish you got with it, Paul Heyman? Well, I said this last week that all that Heyman did was like, hey, I advocate for Cesaro. But my other client being Tinker, he kept promoting his other client, who's Plan C. Brock. Anyway, before we get to that, our last segment, we have Dean Ambrose being sicked on by, like, been fed to the wolves as he would take on Cesaro. And uh, this is probably the second best match of War tonight, Ambrose and Cesaro. Both guys, this was a brawl, but the Lunatic Fringe! Another out of date reference, my Red Rider song, Lunatic Fringe. You know. Anyway, uh, great match involving these two. Like I said, the best, second best match of the night besides Ziggler and uh, Miz. Great action for both these guys. Great action with uh, Ambrose going for a big fly move, and of course, big uppercut in mid air by Cesaro. And we, Cesaro is focusing on. Ambrose is bad arm. You saw him talking it throughout the match. Big time. And uh, then Cesaro turned around fair play. Turned around fair play. Cesaro is all getting focused on near towards the end by Ambrose. And Ambrose, I've said this for weeks, he's looked better ever since he left the Shield. In my mind, we were gypped last night. I thought his match against Wallen should have happened last night. He got thrown out of the building. Then the ball happened in the parking lot and in the ring. But I think they're on the match at SummerSlam. In a no DQ match, it'd be really awesome to finally get that match at SummerSlam. Like the Bray Wyatt situation, to be on a mid card pay per view like Battleground, they don't deserve to be on a mid card pay per view. They need to be on the biggest stage, or should I say, in this case, the biggest part in the summer. It's one of the big four, come on. We would love to see Ambrose and Wild at SummerSlam, which will happen after the match at Battleground never happened. So then, I thought this all was going to get disqualified if they kept. Beating up on Ambrose in the corner. But then we did have a DQ. But it was Ambrose who did a DQing. After we rammed Cesaro a few times against the wing post arm first after Ambrose's arm got attacked on by Cesaro. Like I said, Cesaro fed on Ambrose's bad arm. Cesaro would get rammed against the post. Then, of course, Ambrose would grab a steel chair and ram the arm in the post with the steel chair, causing the DQ and throwing chairs in the ring going nuts again. It was a fun match up between these two guys. Really good match. And like I said, the finish was stupid. The match was great. It's a great match. Great match, but, you know, silly ending with the DQ. So, like I said, it was the second best match besides Ziggler and Miz tonight. And it sees us all with the authority. We'll see what happened. But, uh,. I thought Cesaro would do better with Heyman. I thought Cesaro and Heyman would be a good partnership. But when Heyman kept talking about Lesnar instead of Cesaro, I'm glad Cesaro dumped him and Cesaro is floundering again. So I hope Cesaro does well again as a solo guy. He doesn't need anybody. I don't think he needs Zeb Carter. I don't think he needs Heyman. He needs to be himself. The king of swing. Him himself and him. 
So let's see how this all does now they officially dumped Heyman. Because Heyman's now with Plan C. As Triple H was focusing more on business than family matters. He's like, family, family first. How long is she going to be in there? I love the way Triple H did that. Like I said, she, he cared about business first instead of family first. Because he's about to visit Stephanie in jail after he made the announcement of who's going to take on John Cena at SummerSlam. And by the way, John Cena was not on Raw tonight. He, like the Miz, he's shooting a movie. Another movie that'll be in a Walmart bid for five bucks. Like his other movies, The Reunion and Legendary. I think Marines in there too. And also, 12, 12, I forget what the name of the movie. 12 hours and 12 minutes or 12 strikes or something. Anyway, Drew Brace put the, na the uh, opponent for Cena. Owen came out. It reminded me of what happened a few weeks ago when everyone was like, Ooh, Jericho's going to come back as they're hinting some media mogul's going to come back. The superstar media mogul. Then Miz came out. We were swamped for a minute. Then Jericho came back. That's what happened with this scenario. Owen came out. It's like, oh, man, it's not Lesnar, as expected. But then Roman Reigns would come out and beat up on Orton with the seeds for their match growing bigger after this attack. So it looks like it is going to happen, Orton and Reigns. Especially, especially after that, we did see Paul Heyman came out and said, Triple H, Plan A, Randy Orton's not working out. Because Roman Reigns keeps getting in Orton's way. Plan B ain't working. Seth Rollins ain't working because every time he wants to cash in an MITB briefcase, he knows Ambrose is looking to attack. So you gotta look for Plan C. Well, here comes the pain. Brock Lesnar. Lesnar has faced Cena two times before. During Lesnar's first stint in WWE, and not, not a lot of people know this, because WWE likes to tiptoe around the truth. They don't remind people that Triple H took on Tinker once before, because they want Triple H to look invincible. Again, Tinker back in WrestleMania 27. And that's what I think is going to happen with Cena. They're going to probably mention the fact that Cena beat Lesnar in Extreme Rules 2012 and Lesnar's best fight back besides his match against Punk at SummerSlam last year. They're going to tiptoe the fact that Cena's first ever championship match when he was a good heel, the rapper here that we all know and love and want to see come back when whatever fucking happened, was against Lesnar at Backlash 2003 during Lesnar's first stint in WWE. Let me say this about Lesnar. When Lesnar was in his first stint in WWE in 2002-2003, he was great. I liked him as a sports entertainer. You know, he came from the collegiate stomping grounds. You know, he's an NCAA champion wrestler, you know, elite in the collegiate rounds. And then he went to WWE and he learned a whole new way of being a professional sport and it, you know, he adapted well. But then he went to UFC and beat up on people like Frank Mir. But I think it took the UFC style of WWE. He forgot how it was to be a sports entertainer. He learned how to be a UFC guy. So he took, like I said, that UFC style back to WWE and just been beating up on people ever since. Cena, Triple H, and of course, more importantly, The Undertaker. Of course, the one behind the one in 21 and 1. And like I said, Cena haters will lavitate towards anybody who takes out Cena. It doesn't matter about the past. They're going to override and overlook Brock Lesnar being the streak. Because they want Lesnar to beat the shit out of John Cena. And if some people didn't know that John Cena wasn't going to be on water night, they were like saying, well, Cena get his ass beat by Lesnar. May not happen next week. But the build-up for the main event is on, with Lesnar getting the shot against Cena at SummerSlam. Once again, a part-timer gets a title shot over people who work every week in the company. You know, like I said, Lesnar was good when he was around 10 years ago. But as, like I said, he forgot to be a sports entertainer. He forgot how it was to be a sports entertainer because he bought the UFC style with him. And as we've seen that his matches. And it, Heyman's promo was great about, like, dissing the, like, saying all the Man who never got tucked in every night. No matter what side of the fence you're on, Brock Lesnar is gonna beat up on Cena. He's gonna injure Cena. He's gonna beat on Cena. I play. I love when Paul Heyman did this. I pledge allegiance to the Conqueror. One C Nation. One C Nation under John. Now, now, invis invisible. With no more hustle. Loyalty and respect for all. 
I did like that little quote at the end with Brock Lesnar, the beast incarnate, the conqueror. What may you call him? What nickname? He has more nicknames than Randy Orton. You know, Randy, what nickname is he this week? The Apex Predator, the Viper, the Legend Killer. You know what I mean? So Lesnar gets a shot against Cena at SummerSlam. That's official. But seeds are planted for possible matches at SummerSlam involving Orton and Roman Reigns. Now that Reigns and Trip Rates' fight ain't going to happen until I'm in the champions, or I would like to see him in Hell in a Cell. In Hell in a Cell. Other matches possible for SummerSlam. Bray Wyatt and Jericho rematch. And I hope Jericho loses. I want Bray Wyatt to get another big win and get back on track and be another and get his momentum back up after losing to Cena. And then a possible rematch against Uso and Wyatt, AJ and Page, and Jericho and Miz and Ziggler. Especially after that match tonight. So there you go. That is it for my warm review for tonight. Thank you all very much for watching. With that in mind, y'all been attacked by the new review. And thoughts from Battleground as well, since I did make a proper review for that last night from Zach. Thanks again for watching. See ya. Yeah.